Hey everybody, Chris Derrick here. Um, thought I'd talk about my Sabre f fandom. Uh, born in 1989, that was me. Um, growing up pretty much in Western New York my whole life. You've either got only so many things or interests or hobbies, you know, especially when you live in Western New York, you're either a Bills fan or you're a Sabres fan. That's how I see it. And I grew up on the Sabres. Even though I got my love for the Buffalo Bills, I grew up on the Sabres. And I pretty much, as you can see behind me, I grew up on these guys. And the fact is that I couldn't really see myself pulling for any other team, pulling for, going for any other sport. I grew up on this. I lived, I live on this. Hell, I'm going to die a hockey fan, and I'm going to die a Sabres fan. But it's been really frustrating if you're a Sabres fan out there and you will, and you watch this video. If you're a Sabres fan out there, you know how frustrating it's been. Ten years. Ten years now. We haven't seen any playoffs. We've seen teams just go out there and play so unpassionate and have no, it seems like, no interest to either fight or play hard. And it's like, where are we going with this? You know, and I don't really know where I'm going with this video, really. But let's rewind the clocks back a little bit. You know, franchise was founded in 1970. It was founded by the Knox Brothers. You know, that, you know, and started to have some, you know, success right away. 1975, we competed for our first Stanley Cup with the French Connection line of Gilbert Perrault, Rene Robert, and Richard Martin. And Richard Martin, you know, Rene Robert, God bless their souls, you know, because they passed away, you know, recently. Um, Richard Martin was first. He passed away in 2011. And Rene Robert just passed away recently. I think it was like last month. Um, but fast forwarding here a bit, um, Buffalo played their games in, a, in the Memorial Auditorium in downtown Buffalo from 1970 to 1996. And in those early to mid nineties, that's when I pretty much got my love and my fan base because I was born in 1989. Um, I grew up on guys like Pat LaFontaine, uh, Michael Pekka, Vaslav Varada, Dominic Hasek, Andre Triboloff, Matthew Barnaby, you know, all these up and you know, upcoming guys that, you know, I pretty much watched throughout the 90s and throughout the early 2000s. Um, you know, fast forward, they closed out the odd going into Marine, Lin Marine Midland Arena which is now the Key Bank Center. Yeah, they've been in the same arena, which has had multiple names throughout the years. Uh, uh, Marine Midland Arena, HSBC Arena, First Niagara Center, and Key Bank Center. I think there was a name missing there. But anyways, <sighs> there's so many peop different people have taken partnership and ownership of the franchise. From, I've heard guys, names like Larry Quinn, uh, Regis, who, uh, um, the, pretty much Adolphia, <laughs> pretty much was running the Sabres at the time. Um, then going into, I'd have to say it was the 2002, 2000, and, no, 03, 04 season, I do believe it was, the team was in danger of possibly being sold or probably moving. And Tom Galasano, he steps in and he buys the franchise along with Larry Quinn. And um, they just, uh, you know, took into making sure that the team stayed in Buffalo. And we had success around those years too. And the 2005-2006 season, I thought, was probably the most successful season I ever got to witness, you know, growing up. But, yeah, I haven't forgotten that 99 Cup run. No, Yeah, no goal. 
st you know, I'm pretty sure still bothers some Sabres fans out there. Um, and I pretty much just have lived through highs and lows with this team. But this is probably the greatest low I have ever witnessed with this franchise on a whole. And it's just unbelievable how far we have fallen because the two people now who own the team don't even pay attention to it. Yeah, and I'm talking about Terry and Kim Pagula. I have never seen two people so oblivious and two people who are so, like, I... It's unbelievable how when I first saw Pagula, Terry Pagula buy the Sabres from Tom Galasano. And he took over and I believe the hype that, you know, especially when he said starting today, the reason for the Sabres' existence will, to be, will be to win a Stanley Cup. Yeah, well, guess what? You've owned the team for over 10 years now. You haven't made the playoffs once. Oh, what about that run in 2010-2011? That was still Galasano's team. It was still Tom Galasano's team. I don't give the Pagulas the credit for that yet. And I probably never will because it, they just came in already over halfway through the season. That's when they came in. And to quote somebody by the name of Steve Dangle, I'm pretty sure a lot of you hockey fans out there know who that is. But he said, being a Leafs fan... Is like being a fan on eSports NHL on legendary di legendary difficulty. I beg to differ because his team makes the playoffs, but they get knocked down the first round pretty much every year. I don't know if I really want a team to, that has so much success throughout the season only be knocked down the first round. You know, I'd rather have I'd rather not make the playoffs at all. You know, considering what he <laughs> what he's dealing with. <laughs> But, anyways, um, I think being a Sayers fan is being on legendary difficulty. Because how many times the last few years have we watched this team have such great success throughout the start and then just fall all to pieces towards the end? How much do we have to deal with, you know, when it comes to that? Um... I guess I'm not losing my mind right now because going into this shortened 2021 season, even though we picked up guys like Eric Stahl, Taylor Hall, you know, picking those guys up, having the core that we had already with Jack Eichel, Sam Reinhart, upcoming guy in Victor Olison, hoping Jeff Skinner would have a bounce back year after his first year with us having a 40 goal season. And pretty much fall, not really doing that well after we signed on a big time contract. And then going into this year, bringing in Eric Stahl, we hope that maybe it would help turn him around. But Ralph Kruger, who we had at that start of the year, you know, and pretty much having no freaking clue of how to run this team. Oh, I got a defensive mindset. Well, this team is not built on offense, on defense. It's built on offense. It's built to score goals. You know, and now we're pretty much got nothing now. <laughs> um, but let's talk about what the Pagulas have done since they've taken ownership of this team. They pretty much fired every single general manager from Darcy Regeer to... Tim Murray, the Jason Botterill, and now we're at Kevin Adams. Four GMs. Uh, coaches that we've had since, you know, since they took over. Lindy Ruff, you know, they f let him go. Then it was uh, Ron Rolston. We had him for a short time, and then Ted Nolan was brought in. Not by him, not by the Pagulas, but by Pat LaFontaine. Because Pat LaFontaine was named president of the organization, he brought in Tim Murray. Tim Murray went over LaFontaine's head because LaFontaine wanted to build a team around Ryan Miller. Everybody knows Ryan Miller. Who doesn't love Ryan Miller? Um, it's 
it's so tough to talk about the, this stuff because it's so frustrating, but they traded Ryan Miller, and after that happened, Pat resigned. He was done with this. You know, and so Kim Vagula was pretty much being, like, president and r running the show, and she sucks. I'm going to tell you right now, she sucks. I don't care what kind of flag I get for this either, but I'm going to flat out say it. She fucking sucks. And it's... God. I'm the kind of guy, though, that I cheer for this team through thick and thin, you know, good or bad, you know... Because I still believe in this. Yes, I do believe in this. But when a moment sucks, I'm not going to be in denial and be like, oh, we're going to be fine, we're going to be okay. No. When a moment sucks, it fucking sucks. No matter how much, no matter how much hype is, built, is put into it. You know, like, I am ashamed of myself for even thinking that we were going to have a shot this year. Especially bringing in Taylor Hall because that guy did not show up for anything. Jack Eichel playing hurt, fucking whining and crying like he usually does, you know, you know, it's, it's, how can you make that guy team captain? How can you pay this cry, this big freaking cry baby eight years for $80 million, $10 million a season, call him your captain when he just does not act like a captain? He's not a leader, okay? He's a good player. Now, listen to what I just said there. Jack Eichel, he's a good player. I say good because he's not great. There are guys out there who are great, okay? There are many guys who have played this game that are great. You know, Wayne Gretzky, Mark Messier, you know, Henri the Pocket Rocket Richard. There's a long list of great players out there. Jack Eichel's not one of them. I know he's still very young, still has a probably a good career ahead of him, but he will never compare to guys like that guy right there, Jobert Perrault. He doesn't come close. Um, but it's frustrating because in Buffalo, we this is all we got. We got our Bills, we got our Sabres, we got our sports teams. We don't have, you know, sunny weather all the time. We don't have nice, you know, like all these nice beaches and all these attractions and everything. We got some stuff out here, but it's not, com you know, compared to like Tampa Bay or in their words, Champa Bay, you know, Stanley Cups, Super Bowl, World Series, you know, the whole works. They've been, they're having a party down there in Tampa, in Tampa Bay. Um, you know, but when it comes to, like, nice places like that, you know, for us, it's just sports. That's what we have to fall back on. And when our escape, because it's, this is, sports is our escape from reality. And when it's more miserable than our reality, you know, we're going to speak our mind. We're going to be pissed. We're going to be upset. You know, if you're a fan, a diehard fan as I am, we're going to show our frustration and our anger about everything that there is to this franchise and to our sports. When the Pagulas bought the Buffalo Bills, I knew right away that this team was going to be on the back burner and they were just going to focus on the, you know, Buffalo Bills, you know, and I've seen Kim Pagula on these video interviews with Good Morning Football and with every other thing that involves with the Bills. I'm like, really? You don't have time to, you're the president of this hockey team. You don't have time to f focus on us. You only want to deal with what's going on that's successful. You know, then bring somebody in to be president. Bring somebody in that has great knowledge of this sport. Bring somebody in who's actually going to care about this. You know, just do something that's going to... 
Son of a bitch. You know, that... Bring somebody in who cares. You know, obviously you don't. I'm going to go, you know, just say it, and I've said it in a few videos already. It's going to be 11 years of no playoffs. Wish there was some miracle that was going to happen this year, but I'm not seeing it. You know, we <laughs> during this offseason, we signed two goalies to, for pretty much league minimum for each one for like a year. I think we're just going to try to build, I guess, Ugo Pekalukanen to be our next big time starter. And I hope, I hope he can live up to the hype. I hope he can bring the success that everybody expects him to bring. You know, but quite honestly, I think that maybe he's ready to make the jump, but part of me still doesn't feel like he is. Um, Dylan Cousins, the workhorse from Whitehorse. He proved a lot, you know, especially to me, you know, the kind of, the kind of guy he is. He's a great young guy. He can he can play it pretty well. He's not afraid to drop the gloves. I was actually kind of shocked to watch him fight in that game against the Rangers. And unfortunately, our team couldn't respond to what he did, which is very sad. But at the same time, trying to build a team around guys like Dylan Cousins, Rasmus Dahlin, and Casey Middlestat, I'm glad you're trying to focus on a team basis, uh, Kevin, and not trying to just wrap it around one guy. But also, it's a you know tough situation right now because these kids still have a lot of work to do and a lot to prove. And I hope that this is going to be their you know realize that this is going to be their time to shine and their time to just hopefully you know start having success not just for themselves. But they want to bring the success to the team. It's it's a rough go, and it's been a rough go. And sometimes I get picked on for being a fan of this franchise, especially with how things have been the last 10 years. I'm going to keep rooting for them, and I'm going to hope that one day we're going to have success. My goal, as not just as a fan, but as a human being, that championship success is going to come to Buffalo at one point. Before I die, I hope. I hope. You know, I'm pretty sure everybody's seen those shirts. One before we die. One before I die. You know, it, it goes for everybody. In Western New York, in Buffalo, anybody who's a fan of this team, you know, if you watch this video... If you're, you know, if you don't live in Buffalo, if you're across the country, or if you're just somewhere in the other part of the world, you're a fan of this team, I'm hoping that success comes, and I'm hoping that, you know, you stick around for that. Don't give up. Keep, you know, like, keep your head up, even though that's some, there's just a lot of times where we watch this team play so unpassionately that it's so unbearable. You know, but I'm not the guy who's going to shut the T off them, even if they're probably down 9-2. You know, I'll watch it till the end, and then I'll speak my mind about it later. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm pretty sure out there that there's a lot more people who are older than I am and have watched this team longer than me. You know, probably understand my frustrations and where I'm coming from. But either way, I'm hoping good times are close. Being a Sabres fan is not just being a fan. To me, it's a way of life. It's a life for me. And I'm pretty sure for a lot of other people. Melody Martin, uh, Dwayne Steinle, you guys out there know you're listening. Hopefully, success is coming. Hopefully. So, thank you guys for watching this video. 
whoever watches out there click like if you like it click subscribe you know like click subscribe if you uh, really want to be a part of my channel let your friends know let a lot of people know because i'm trying to build something here you know on, on at least on my part Damn. <laughs> what a life.